Good afternoon. Thank you for joining me again today as I report on the ongoing crisis of COVID-19 here in Erie County. Today, I want to report that we have our fifth positive case of COVID-19. This person is in their early 30s and they had recently traveled outside of Erie County. Contact, tra contact tracing by the Erie County Department of Health regarding the individual's lifestyle, their work, locations of daily routines is in progress. Again, as I said yesterday, if you have not been contacted by the health department, there is an extremely low chance that you have to be concerned with this positive case. If you have been in contact with any of the five individuals who have been identified as a positive case here in Erie County, you would have or will soon be notified. Our negative numbers in terms of testing uh, as of today are 77 negatives and as I said, five positives in our system. Our environmental task force at the Erie County Department of Health continues to make rounds to enforce Governor Tom Wolf's order to close all non-life sustaining businesses and help our businesses to be in compliance. Two enforcement teams have visited 10 or more locations this morning. Two more, I believe, are being inspected as I speak. A significant number of new complaints came in overnight to our, our telephone line or, and have been coming in throughout the morning. I have some practical suggestions to reduce your exposure to COVID-19. I ask that residents, when visiting our life-sustaining businesses, such as your grocery store or your pharmacy, please take a list with you so that you limit your time in the store and know exactly what you need to buy. We've also heard several reports of families coming in with a large number of people, children maybe, and others, and they're browsing around the stores. Please, I urge all of you, when possible, to have only one person in your family go into the store to do the shopping, to limit the number of people in the store, and also to help keep you safe and limit your exposure to others. In terms of the waivers that businesses have asked for so that they can remain open and working, we still have not received a full list from the state and we are waiting upon that list. So if you need to continue to apply for a waiver and you have not done so, then visit the website, our website at eriecountypa.gov. The link then is to the, uh, the link to the application is available on that website under resources. Again, if you have any questions or concerns about this enforcement or symptoms, you should contact the health department at 814-451-6700. 814-451-6700. Next, Erie County's Department of Human Services, partnering with Serve Erie and United Way Erie 211 line need help with volunteers to assist in homeless shelters. This would be adults 18 years or older. And we ask that anyone with an underlying health problem or who lives in a home with someone with an underlying health problem not volunteer in this manner. But if you're healthy and live with others who are healthy and you are willing and able to assist during this time, you're just the kind of person that we are looking for. Those interested in learning more about this and finding out if you're qualified to volunteer should email Ashley Westgate at ashley at serveerie.com. That's Ashley, A-S-H-L-E-Y, at serveerie, S-E-R-V-E-R-I-E dot -E -E com. In the state, I want to tell you some more about the numbers. As I mentioned yesterday, Pennsylvania was at 480 on Sunday, 645 yesterday, and today took a jump of over 200 more positives, up to 852, with 10 deaths being reported across the Commonwealth. Allegheny went from 40 on Sunday, 48 yesterday, to 58 today, and they also have two deaths. 
And as you look on the state's website, you can see the numbers for each county across the Commonwealth, with now 40 counties having a positive case out of the 67 counties in the Commonwealth. Given these numbers, as well as conversations that I had this morning with the county executives from Cuyahoga County, which, Ohio, which is Cleveland, New York County, New York, which is the Buffalo area, Allegheny County, Pennsylvania, which is Pittsburgh area, and County Commissioner in Montgomery County, Pennsylvania, which is one of the hardest hit counties, as well as talking to the governor and getting his staff's feedback. Today, I am issuing a stay-at-home order for Erie County to do what is necessary to save lives in our county and to stay head ahead of the spread of COVID-19 here in Erie County. This order will go in effect at 12.01 tomorrow, March 25th, and will continue to stay in effect until April 6, 2020, matching the governor's orders for seven other counties in, in Pennsylvania already. As I said, the governor is in support of what I am doing today. This is actually what I've been asking everyone to do for quite a few days now. And now, instead of asking, it will be an official order. Individuals may leave their residence to perform any of the following uh, activities and allowable essential travel. Tasks that would be to maintain your health and safety or the health and safety of your family or other household members, including your pets. Getting necessary services or supplies for yourself, for your family, for your household, or as part of the volunteer efforts or to deliver these services and supplies to others in our community to help maintain their safety, their sanitation, and essential operations of their residents. You can still engage in outdoor activities. You can go walking, hiking, jogging, riding your bike. But when you're out, we ask that you maintain social distance, six feet or more away from anyone that you would encounter while you're outside. You are able to go perform work, providing essential services and products of our life-sustaining businesses. You can care for another family member or a pet in another household. And you can have travel related to the provisions of or access to the above-mentioned activities or life-sustaining business activities. We ask, though, when it comes to travel, that you all truly think about this. Out of the five cases in Erie County, Three of them have come because someone has left Erie County and traveled to another area where there is community spread of COVID-19. Our other two cases have had direct contact with one of those three individuals. So as you can see, we believe if people would stay in Erie County and not travel outside of Erie County, and if people who come into our county, such as a returning child coming home or some other friend or relative coming in, that they quarantine themselves for 14 days away from you and away from everyone in Erie County. This is how we're going to stop the spread and have and stop the occurrence of community spread within Erie County. And that is what we're trying to do is stay ahead of the curve. I have to tell you, my uh, fellow county executives and county commissioner that I talked to today who have this uh, COVID-19 raging through their communities say, do it now. They told me, do it now. You have an opportunity to stay ahead of this. And that's what this is all about. We need to stay ahead of this. We need to mitigate the spread in our community, keep it from being a community spread, and this order will help us do that. All of the restrictions and allowable activities for this stay at home order are on our website our website, eriecountypa.gov. I recommend you all look at those if you have any questions about what you can and cannot do. And lastly, I thank all of you for assisting us in the stay at home order. Because again, it's only with the help of each one of you, helping all of the health officials, all the government officials trying to protect you, 
It's only by us all working together that we're going to make a difference here in Erie County and in the end, save lives. So again, our website, eriecountypa.gov, has all of this information on it. It's a great resource. Please go there. You will find much to read. And if you have any specific questions, you can always call 451-6700. That would be the Erie County Department of Health. So now I would like to turn it to, over to questions, and I'll start with the Erie Times Happy News. Dahl Kemper just made this announcement a mere minute. Erie Times News, do you have any questions? Uh, yes, Kathy, it, it's David. Um, first of all, we're getting a lot of, of bleed over from some of the other folks that are listening in. Uh, I know Classy 100 was just bleeding in badly, so I didn't catch the end of what you were saying. But if you could um, just talk, if you can, just talk a little bit about how the stay-at-home order is different than what the recommendations you had before. Is there any, anything that's different other than that you are ordering people to do this? There is no difference, really, in what I have been requesting of our community for days now. Um, but I am now ordering go. it. Official, so I'm asking people to follow this order. I put it in place, and our local authorities will have the opportunity to help enforce this order. There are seven other counties in the state who have this order already in place. We are working with them uh, to get some guidance on the enforcement side of this, but I do feel this is necessary, and the only way we're going to stop us from having community spread here also of COVID-19. I'd like to, I'd like to ask, uh, Talk Erie, if you would like to ask a question. Has a stay at home order. Also, the city of Erie declared yes. a state of emergency again. disaster today. Now, that's not class. something um, to worry about. That's actually uh, Excuse me. I'd like to ask all. We have, we are hearing other uh, media outlets on our feedback here. Thank you. Talk Erie, do you have any questions for me? Help out the people um, here in yes. Erie and all of you. All right. Is Stick there... with us. We'll give you that information you need. And of course. Talk Erie. I, I, I need every media outlet out there to please mute your mics so that we can hear the questions. Talk Erie. Yes. Hi, this is Shaney Bills from Talk Erie. Is there any indication um, of community spread, really, that is coming back from the testing just in Erie County? I know that you've got uh, the, the five positive cases and three of them are from traveling people. Um, so it, there doesn't seem to be any indication. Is that correct? We have no indication that we are seeing community spread here in Erie County. Okay. Um, I have to say that those of us who've been in the middle of this now for a few weeks, we are honestly kind of amazed that we only have five cases and we haven't seen community spread. And I think that is because so many of our people in our community are doing the right thing. They've been trying to help us with this and you're doing a great job, but that's why we felt we needed to go a little further and make this an order because we see what's happening in those three communities that surround us that we all have close contact with, Buffalo, Cleveland, Pittsburgh, those counties, and those officials there told me I am doing the right thing by doing this, and they only wish they were in the situation we are today. So we do not see any community spread. What we're seeing is people are traveling outside of our community, and they are bringing COVID-19 back here. And I ask everyone, and I ask every business who's listening, do not send your employees out to travel. If you can avoid travel outside of our community, you should avoid it. We know that there's some people who have to go, particularly because of medical reasons, uh, or to take care of an elderly parent. Um, those are obviously travel that has to happen. But for anyone who has traveled outside of this community, you should quarantine yourself for 14 days in your home and away from others so that we can be sure you're not bringing it back to our community. Now I'd like to turn to Erie News Now. Hi, Ethan Kibbe here. Uh, good afternoon. A question for you regarding the stay-at-home order. Can you talk to me about how that will be enforced and what punishment, if any, it carries for uh, disobedience? So we are working on that um, as we speak. Um, again, we don't have any intention of arresting anyone. We really want the community to understand the seriousness and comply. 
but it will give uh, law enforcement the opportunity to, uh, to direct individuals, to direct groups that they see about this order and uh, to give them a warning and, and, and get compliance in that regard. Thanks. How about Jet TV? You have a question? Yeah, hi, Kathy, Samir. So um, let's circle back to the grocery store stuff. So are you looking or possibly uh, asking businesses to limit the number of people in uh, their stores? So we have asked some businesses to limit their numbers, and, and especially when they have a small space. Um, and so my health department staff, the enforcement division of this effort, is working directly with each business on their specific location, uh, what they have available, what the constraints might be. So we're not giving a specific number because it really does vary depending on the size of the facility. But what we have noticed uh, is there are groups of families, particularly maybe in a grocery store, going shopping together. Now, I know if you're a single parent and you have no other adult to watch your children, you don't have a choice. And so I don't want to say that you can't go in there together. But if you are able to leave family members in the car or at home and one person can go in with a list, that is what I am asking of people. I'm also asking people on your way to work, those who have to go to work, uh, drink, get your coffee at home or go through a drive through Try not to go into a building if you don't have to go into a building. And those are the kind of things we should be thinking about. How can I limit my contact with people I don't know or even people I know but I don't live with? So that is what we should all be thinking about. How can I limit that contact with others? Order. Is there any other media outlet on this call who would like to ask a question that I didn't already talk to? And I'll come back to the others. Of the spread of All right, I'm going to go back to the Erie Times News. All right, Kathy, thanks. It's, it's David again. I, I unfortunately did not get to hear your response to my, my Today, initial question. I am issuing um, because a stay at home order for Erie County. Because of the um, feedback from the class of 100 TJ. Okay, okay. We, are, we are still getting feedback order. from the media. I need all media to mute your mics, please. We are still getting feedback from you. Okay, David, I'm sorry. What was your question again from the beginning? It was just a repeat. Is there any differences with the stay-at-home order versus what you had recommended earlier? There are no differences. There are no differences in what I've been asking. It's just instead of a request, this is an order. It just increases the seriousness, hopefully, uh, and people's realization of what we all need to do. And if I could, Kathy, yes, just follow got, up. You um, have another question. Mentioned... Yes. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, if, if I could, um, you, you had mentioned about folks returning, specifically, I think, um, students. And I'd also like to address uh, snowbirds coming back, perhaps, from the Florida area. You talk about quarantine. I want to make sure that you're specifically referring to self-quarantine and the rules, the 14 days, staying six feet away from people in your household. Is that what you're talking about? I am talking about that. They should self-quarantine. And when you self-quarantine in your home, so if you are coming back into a home where there are other people, you should have a separate bathroom to use, and you should be the only one using that. Or if there was a couple coming back and they, they happen to live with other people, uh, those two should be using one bathroom, and everyone else who's been in the house should be using another. You should be in a different area of the house so you don't come in contact with each other. It, you shouldn't be touching the same surfaces. So, uh, you know, you might have to have meals delivered to that part of the house where you're at from the others in your house wow. so that you don't have that contact. You don't want to have everyone in the kitchen, um, even if you're staying six feet apart. You need to be quarantined from those people for 14 days. And those are people returning to Erie from areas where there have been significant number of cases? Is that I would say, I want to be specific about this? I would say people returning from anywhere at this point. Um, Every state has COVID-19. Uh, we have counties who we don't know if they have any cases because they haven't even been able to do any testing. We know that the testing uh, in our country as a whole uh, has really been abysmal compared to what it should be. And so uh, I'm recommending anyone who comes back to Erie County, do your part to keep our county safe and quarantine yourself for 14 days. Uh, make sure you don't have any symptoms during those 14 days and then you can go about uh, the activities that everyone else is uh, allowed to do under this order. Okay, now I'd like to ask Talk Erie, do you have another question? 
Um, because of the feedback, I did not actually get to hear. How many negative cases as of today? Was it 77? We have 77 <coughs> negative cases and five positive cases uh, okay. as, of, as of the time <coughs> of this press conference. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Erie County Executive Kathy. I'd like to see if Erie News Now would like to uh, ask another question. I would, please. Um, how long ago did this person travel Erie outside County of Erie County? Uh, you know, how long have they been back here before that positive order. test? And uh, has this person required any hospitalization? Erie County. Again, I would like to ask every media outlet to please mute your microphones. We're getting a lot of feedback, and we need you to mute your um, microphones so everyone can hear. Thank you. Uh, the question was the person number five. Uh, how long ago did they travel? and uh, are they hospitalized? They are not hospitalized, they are in their 30s. They are uh, convalescing at home. We expect a full recovery. Uh, it's very, very interesting and actually surprising that our five cases are all in their 20s and 30s. Um, I, I, that's just been quite surprising to all of us. But with that being said, three of those cases have traveled away. Uh, the last case, I don't know the exact dates of their travel, but my understanding is it was fairly recent travel. And so um, even since we've been dealing with this pandemic, people are still traveling. Their businesses are still having them travel. That has to stop. We can do almost everything virtually anymore for most of our businesses. And so we should not be going to conferences. We should not be traveling outside this community for vacation. We should be staying in our community, doing what we need to do to help keep this community safe and keep our fellow citizens healthy and alive. WSEE, or I'm sorry, WJET TV. Yeah, I wanted to circle back to uh, the businesses really fast. So do we have um, a number on how many businesses received waivers? We do not. We have been waiting for that from the state since this weekend. We have not seen any lists. Uh, the only way that we know a business has a waiver is if they have told us. So we have gone out to check on some businesses regarding compliance, and they have shown us their waiver that they have gotten from the state. Every single day I've asked the state for that uh, list, but we have not received a list. Now I know they have gotten tens of thousands of requests for waivers, so I don't want to um, say they aren't doing their job because I think they are, but they have been overwhelmed uh, by the waiver requests and they go through them obviously diligently and it goes through a multi-layer process from my understanding. All right, and uh, there's still kind of feedback. I understand it's probably a little, uh, some people aren't muting their phone, but uh, there's still a little bit of feedback. We have uh, media outlets on uh, this call who have your mics still not muted. I need everyone please to mute your microphone so that everyone can hear the other questions and hear the answers. Thank you. All right, I'm gonna go back to Erie Times News. David? Uh, Kathy, yes, so it's, it's three of the five cases have a connection, uh, close contact spread. Um, the other two, well, the first one wasn't close contact, the first one was the first case. Number two, and then the most current one, you're saying are very likely tra they are travel related. Right, we believe so. Um, as we mentioned, the uh, number two had been on a cruise, and this most recent one was uh, out of the state, in the United States, but uh, travel, and we know that travel is one of the biggest risk factors for picking up COVID-19 and bringing it back to Erie County. So three of the cases, the first one, as you mentioned, uh, was from a travel that that person had had, Two of the other cases are from a contact with one of our known positives. And then, uh, and again, and this is when we were having some feedback to this. None of the five have been, just an update, none of the five have been hospitalized? None of the five have been hospitalized. Uh, luckily, they're young. They're probably healthy. Um, and I don't believe any of them have any underlying conditions that I know of, but I, I don't know that for sure, but they're young. And uh, we would expect that they would make a full recovery at their home. Talk Erie, do you have any other questions? I just, uh, is there an uh, this is, uh, go ahead. Go ahead, Joel. Okay, yeah, it's Joel, I'm sorry. This is a question about personal protective uh, 
uh, equipment and uh, and also you know, the availability of that, and also the the concept that uh, we're hearing lots of reports about still lots of um, uh, lots of re- uh, the, the grocery stores, you know, without. Uh, toilet paper and all of the essentials here. What can? What are you? What kind of com- communication has there been with the major grocery store chains as to uh, their supply chain? So my understanding is, if we would all just buy what we normally do, and if we all just buy what we really need right now, our grocery stores would have chance to catch up. Uh, but as soon as they have something in stock, people go in and buy too much and take it home and hoard it. Uh, I had a personal idea, the, you know, those little free libraries, and I thought about going. I, I have one extra packet of toilet paper that I've had prior to this all happening, and I thought maybe I would go out and put a roll in some of those just to share with my neighbors. Um, but uh, this is the problem. People are hoarding things, and that is detrimental to all of us. So I ask people, just buy what you normally buy, the grocery store, ch- uh, the, the the food chain, supply chain is working. Uh, I've been on I-90 a couple times, um, and there's lots of trucks on the road. So we ask people to please only buy what you need. And if you have extra toilet paper or whatever it is that people need, put it out there and offer to your friends and neighbors. I could give you a roll. I could give you hand sanitizer. I could give you whatever it is that people are out there looking for. That would help a lot. Erie News Now, do you have any questions? Yes, please, if I may. Um, any clue how long this person was back? I know you said the travel was fairly recent, but was he or she quarantined right away, or could she or he or she have been spreading the virus a little bit before the positive test result came back? So what we do is we, we, we find out when the person was tested, when they, are bi- when they go in because they have some symptoms, then we inform, or we or the health facility doing the testing, informs that person that they need to self-quarantine at home until they get their results, and then they will get further instructions at that point. So this person, I believe, self-quarantined themselves. Now, prior to going to get the test, I have no idea how long they might have been here or who they might have seen. And that's where our healthcare professionals come in at the Erie County Department of Public Health. They contact the person. They then find out who are the names of people that you might have seen between the time that you quarantine yourself, you know, and and you came back. So whether it be somebody they worked with, uh, people that they live with, uh, a friend that they might have seen, and so all of those things are done. And then we contact those individuals and say, you have been potentially exposed. You need to quarantine yourself until this person finds out if they are positive or negative. If they're negative, then everybody can go back to doing what is allowable under the order. So. If you have not been contacted by the health department, you haven't had contact with this person in a way that we would think would be dangerous and that you would likely contract COVID-19. Community spread would be if someone came back and is symptomatic and didn't go in and get tested and suddenly, let's just say they go into a grocery store and they touch a bunch of stuff and they now somebody else comes behind them and they touch the same stuff this person touched you know you could potentially spread it that way pretty quickly and that's why we go back to the hand washing we go back to the sanitizer Uh, when you go into the grocery store or any place where you know there's been others be careful Uh, take sanitizer with you if you have it Uh, use it often Uh, don't touch your face until you can wash your hands. So, you know, leave that grocery store, wash your hands. Uh, You can take off your clothes, throw them into the washing machine after you've been to the store. These are really smart things to do. Washing your clothes takes care of the virus. Washing your hands, 20 seconds, takes care of the virus. Uh, Sanitizer is also uh, very successful at that. So these are the kind of things we're asking people. You know, I carry a tissue with me, and because sometimes my eye itches, or I, you know, we all touch our face a lot. I try to remember to grab that tissue and just itch my eye with my tissue, so my hands are not touching my eyes, which could then le- lead a virus into my body. So these are all on our website, eriecountypa.gov, in terms of what we each need to be doing. But that's how we could get community spread. So keeping that social distance, that six feet away from each other, 
being very, very conscious when we are in a public place, such as a grocery store, a pharmacy, any place like that, that we could have contact where somebody else could have been in the place we're at right before us. And, uh, but I have to say, our grocery stores and, and really many of our businesses are trying to do what's right. When I went into the grocery store the other day, there was an employee spraying down the cart before I actually took it and used it. So I think they're trying to really help. They're, you know, I know a lot of them are constantly wiping down their belts. And, but I use uh, disposal, I mean, I use reusable bags um, at the grocery store. So what I did when I came home is I actually threw them in my washing machine and I washed them. So I'm trying to think myself of what, what I need to do to keep myself and my family safe. And those are the kind of tips that I'd like sharing with all of our listeners and viewers here. Jet TV, do you have another question? Yep. Hi, Kathy. So um, if I may, how many people have uh, like been tested from this contact tracing? I don't have that number. I'm sorry, Samir. Uh, and I'd have to go back and, and find that out. But obviously those except for two, would, it would be in our negative numbers. And they only get tested if they have symptoms for the most part. So, um, you know, we have some in the healthcare fields that are not asymptomatic that we test simply because of the nature of the business that they do, the work that they do and how important they are right now to the effort. But for the most part, um, you don't go and get tested unless you become symptomatic because the tests kits are not in, we don't have them in the number that we need them. So unfortunately, um, if we had a lot of test kits, we could do a, be doing a lot more testing than we're able to do at this point. And that's why, again, this stay-at-home order, what I'm asking people to do and have been for days and days, I cannot, again, stress the importance of what I'm asking you to do to help us control this. Uh, Erie Times News, do you have a last question? Uh, yeah, Kathy, if you can, just go through, um, and I know you've said it before, but go through what you expect people to do with a stay-at-home order, the, the steps that they, they can do and what they can't do. Okay, so first of all, we're asking you to stay at home as much as you can. doesn't mean you can't go out in your yard. Um, you can still go out for a walk. You can go out for a jog, a bike ride, a hike in the woods. Uh, but when you do, if you're going out with the people that you live in the house with, Stay as close as you want, but if you're going outside and you see others, stay at least six feet away from anyone you may encounter, even your best friend. Um, you can go to work if you are working in one of those businesses that has been designated life-sustaining and has been uh, allowed to stay working per the governor's order. So you can go to work and you can come home. And when you come home, I would recommend that you do some of those things I just talked about in terms of changing your clothes, taking your shoes off, and making sure you leave most of the things that might carry the virus in a place where they could be washed and taken care of quickly. Um, you can uh, go take care of a sick relative you have a, or an elderly parent. Um, if you have somebody, a pet even, if somebody's left their cat and uh, you're the one that has to go feed that cat, you're allowed to go into that person's house and do that. So we're asking everyone also not to travel outside of Erie County unless absolutely necessary. And we're asking those who come into Erie County from the outside to quarantine themselves for 14 days until we know that you're symptom free. And then you can get into the other um, activities that others have, such as going to a grocery store, pharmacy, things like that when you need to. And all of the things are listed on our website, eriecountypa.gov. Talk, Erie, do you have any last questions? Uh, thank you, ma'am. Okay, and how about Erie News Now? Final one for you. You said you had lots of uh, business complaints today, a big uh, increase. Can you give me a more specific number on that of how many uh, complaints about businesses staying open you've had? I don't know that I have a specific number. Let me check back in my notes here and see if I do. Um, but we did have quite a few calls come in through the night and into the morning today. And, uh, and then we follow up on every single one of those. So we have a team of people really working diligently to follow up um, on those calls. And again, I'm looking here quickly to see if I can find a number for you. But I don't think I have that. Um, we can try to have something for you tomorrow at my press conference if, uh, if we have that available. Sorry about that. Uh, Jet TV, do you have any last question? Yeah, I have a couple questions. So um, I guess, is there anything being done for with this contact tracing as people, obviously, um, like I, like with the first case of the guy uh, had it, or the 
individual had a couple days where they were uh, out in the community. So is there anything being done? Like if I, uh, like let's say someone has COVID and they're positive and they go to like an ATM, or is the health department going out and like cleaning or sanitizing the areas they've been to? Well, no, that's actually not something we do, but we would inform anyone that they may have come in contact with, which it could include a business if they've been at that business, of uh, having a COVID-19 positive person having been in their establishment, and then we would expect the business to take care of their own property. Did you say you I had- I mean, couldn't someone, if I was at like an ATM and like, uh, like the person before me tested positive, would that technically, would I be considered someone they've come into contact with? Well, I don't know that they would know who you were, and I don't know that we would know. So if somebody went and used an ATM, and you, you came by five minutes later and knew it, I don't think that person would know who you were, and they wouldn't even know you were there because they're long gone. And that goes back to using good hygiene. If you're using an ATM machine, have some sanitizer in your car with you, and as soon as you get done with that, put the sanitizer on your hands. I got gasoline last night from my car. I didn't go into the establishment. I just used the gas, uh, you know, used the machine to get my gas, but I had to punch in my numbers and, and everything you have to do. And as soon as I was done with that and, and uh, back in my car, I pulled out my hand sanitizer and I wiped my hands before I even touched my steering wheel. You have to think about this. How could that, how could someone before me potentially have been positive uh, and how can I protect myself? It's really about protecting ourselves. So do what you need to do to protect yourself from contamination from anyone who might be in our community right now, who might be traveling through our community. You know, we have I-90 and 79 and people might be stopping on their way to get gas, for example, or use an ATM machine, for example, and we wouldn't even know who they were, where they came from, where they're going. So it's really up to you as an individual to think about that as you are utilizing anything or touching anything. And uh, take care of yourself, wash your hands, do it for at least 20 seconds. People say, happy birthday twice, I do the ABCs, whatever makes you do it. And uh, you know, make sure you're doing it for 20 seconds and do it often. And certainly when you get home, make sure that you uh, take off the clothes that you've worn out to wherever you've been, if it's been a public place, and uh, put on something new and keep your family safe. You know, we don't need to panic about this, but we are looking at a new reality and we are looking at doing things differently than we probably ever thought of having to do it. But that's the reality we are all in right now. And I'm trying to be here to protect all of you. And I know all of you are helping me and helping so many out here who are trying to keep us all safe and keep our community from being devastated by COVID-19. So I'm gonna end with my message as I have the last few days to stay home, stay safe, stay calm. And I wanna thank you again for really being a partner as we all fight this epidemic, this pandemic, COVID-19. Thank you.